the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point Northern Aquaculture Demonstration Facility introduces the Walleye Video Manual, a series of instructional videos on intensive culture. Video 2, Spawning Techniques. In this video, we will be focusing on hand spawning of captive or wild adult broodstock utilizing a dry spawning technique that is practiced at UWSP and ADF. Care and attention to detail of these techniques can make the difference between having poor or successful egg fertilization. Peak spawning for wild walleyes is in the spring when water temperatures reach 42 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Depending on seasons and locations, normally in Wisconsin, this happens in late April. Whether normal spawning or advanced spawning, after the fish have been properly manipulated, as explained in video 1, they are then collected and examined for gonadal development and sex determination. If fish have been manipulated for advanced spawning, HCG hormone should be prepared in syringes. The hormone can be obtained through your fish veterinarian. Each fish is weighed to determine appropriate levels of hormone to inject. If the fish are not ripe, they are injected on day 0 with 150 IUs per kilogram and on day 2 with 500 IUs per kilogram. Males may only need to be injected once. The injection should be intramuscular along the ventral coloration line. In walleye and sauger, there is a clear differential coloration line between the dorsal and the ventral scales. The needle should be at a slight angle pointing towards the anterior end of the fish. HCG should slowly be injected into the fish to fully absorb the hormone. After the fish are injected, they are placed back into the holding tank. After the first injection, the fish are checked again two days later. Ripe or milting males are kept separate from other fish to be easily obtained. Fish that are green or unripe are injected with HCG a second time with 500 IUs per kilogram. They are then returned to the holding tank. After the fish have been injected twice, they will likely be ready to spawn within 6 to 8 days. Ripe females are collected to be dry spawned. A ripe female will look plump and the vent should be dropped. It is important to fully dry off the fish and your hands before the spawning process. The eggs should not be exposed to water until ready to fertilize with active milt. Water will trigger the egg micropile to open for only a short period of time. If no sperm is present, the opening will close and the eggs will not be fertilized. The eggs are stripped into a dry container. The posterior of the fish should be oriented downward with the tail cocked slightly upward. The eggs should easily flow out by pressing gently on the lower abdomen and pushing downwards towards the vent. Gravity will assist with this process. It is important to strip all the eggs out of the female. Leftover eggs may cause the vent to become plugged, which can lead to internal infections or problem with spawning the following year. Spawned out females should be placed back into a separate rearing tank and provided feed for continued holding. The eggs are set aside and covered. It is important to avoid large temperature fluctuations to the eggs during this period. A dry, covered container should be prepared for milk collection. Several ripe males are collected from the tanks and placed in a tub of oxygenated, tempered water. Males should be fully dried off prior to milk collection. If milt is exposed to water, it becomes quickly activated for a short period of time. This video is showing a drop of milt under a microscope. When water is added to the milt, the sperm cells become rapidly activated. This activity quickly slows, however, in a matter of seconds. The sperm cells are only active for about 12 to 15 seconds after the water exposure. Therefore, fertilization can only occur during this period. The males are stripped into a separate dry container. The milt should easily flow out by pressing gently on the lower abdomen while cocking the tail slightly upward. 
It is important that no water drips into the milk container during this process. Although males may be ready to spawn, some may not provide viable milt. Therefore, to ensure good fertilization success, at least several males should be pooled together to fertilize each group of eggs. The pooled milt and any additional males can now be poured or stripped onto the eggs. Once the milt is in contact with the eggs, fresh tempered water can now be added and gently mixed for 30 to 60 seconds. A feather or soft wide paintbrush are good tools to mix the eggs, milt, and water. A larger container may be needed to add more fresh water and prepare for the addition of clay. Bentonite clay is pre-mixed with water to form a thick slurry. This is added to the fertilized egg mixture and stirred for a few minutes. Fertilized walleye eggs are very adhesive for the purpose of attaching to substrate such as rocks or vegetation. Therefore, in a hatchery setting, the addition of clay will help keep the eggs from binding together or clumping. The mixture is then set aside to allow the eggs to water harden for several hours, where they will swell up to twice their original size and also lose their adhesive quality. During this time, the eggs are very sensitive. Therefore, they should not be disturbed except for the occasional addition of fresh, tempered water to provide oxygen. The eggs are now ready for the next phase. This concludes the video tutorial on spawning techniques. Continue to the next video on egg incubation.